What's up guys? It's Missy. I am back with another SimCity build a video. Today I'm going to be talking about the Missy's Building Guide, the Platinum version. For those of you guys who are not familiar with it, you should watch the Missy's Building Guide Platinum video. It is located on our Facebook page and on here, obviously. For those of you who are not familiar with our Facebook page, type in SimCity Build It, Missy and YT, and you will uh, see it pop up on Facebook. Just hit join and then you can post any questions and uh, you'll have links to all of our guides. Well, my guides, um, the production plan, all of them are in the announcement section and the file section of the, uh, the group upon a member's request. We did put it there. Okay, so the Missy's building guide. Why am I talking about it today? Well, because there seems to be a lot of confusion with certain aspects of the guide. And people being like, okay, well, you know, what do I do here, even though it's said in the video? So I want to recap why we're doing what we're doing. I've told you what to do, but I and I did tell you briefly why. But I want to make very, very clear why you're doing the things that you're doing so you know why you're doing them. Not just because some YouTuber said so, right? Okay, so with the Missy's Building Guide. For those of you who are not familiar with it, it has phenomenal results. Uh, if you would like to see those results, you can look up the video called uh, Max Everything in 90 Days. It was posted a couple of weeks back, so it's not very far down the list. And trust me, you'll want to do the guide after you see the results. Okay, so as you start off with the Missy's Building Guide, you are going to restart your city. It is very important that you restart because you want to do everything 100% correctly. This building guide is really honestly the guide to a perfect city. You can't do better than this. Not from start to basically finish. You, you're not going to do better than this. There, <laughs> there is people who think that they can fix their high level cities and you can only get them so good. Okay. Now, as many of you know from watching the channel, that when you restart, you're restarting because the opportunity uh, to prevail has basically been gone, right? So you're not going to get any better than what you are. It doesn't matter how much storage you unlock, doesn't matter how much dozer you unlock. The bottom line is you can only get so far. Once you unlock all the storage, then what? Then what's your goal? A lot of people don't have goals, and that's part of their problem. They don't really understand why they're playing the game. And the whole idea here is that you are so screwed by EA, okay, this is EA's theory, that by the time you figure out that you messed up, you're not going to want to restart, right? So you're going to try to make it work. And like a lot of people, you're going to pull out your credit card, five bucks here, 10 bucks there. You're going to be so stuck in the, the cycle of, and it's kind of, it's an old saying, a saying where you're so busy fighting the alligators, you forget to clean the swamp. That It's like that. So you're constantly trying to get two steps ahead to take 10 steps back, right? And it becomes this vicious cycle where you're just struggling and suffering and you can't get anywhere you're constantly broke you never have any space you can't hit your epics on time you know uh you play the contest of mayors every week but let's face it at the end of the week you just get bumped down you're miserable it's not fun you're not you're not having any progress right every time you boost your pop you end up having to buy more services upgrade more roads it's just it's miserable it's absolutely miserable to play like that okay so how can you play better? Well, let's start with the fact that your city is not fixable, okay? So if you watch the Should I Restart video, that will help you determine if your city is in fact doomed or if it is fixable. Now, what you should do if you have a really high level city and you've been playing for several years is you should maybe try to start one um, alongside the city and see how fast this one is going to just blow this one out of the water. Okay. And I know how much work gets put into a city. Trust me, I know. Okay. So you've started over. You're doing the Missy's building guide and you want to know where to start. Well, I do have walkthroughs where I go through the first so many levels and I show you guys from, you know, the starting point to, 
I believe we're on walkthrough 15. I have to get a new device and I, I got a cloning app. So we'll work on that. But anyways, you're going to start off and what you're going to do is you're going to build only regular homes. Okay. So looking at your menu here, this home here, the reason for this is because this is the only one that can be converted into an Epic project. Now this is extremely important, you guys. Okay. All these other homes, they don't offer any benefit to you. The service demand on some of these is higher than others. So as you boost the pop, it's going to require more water power sewer than let's say a regular home. So what you do is you build only the residential zones, the regular ones, okay? When you get these to a maximum upgrade, what's gonna happen is it will be eligible for an epic project when you hit level 24. Now, one of the most vital things is to level progressively. Do not camp level 10. Do not camp level 11. Do not camp any other level besides level 24, okay? Speed level, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna use any cash that you get from your city journal, from gift bubbles, from uh, video ads, any cash that you obtain at all is going to be used to unlocking your shop slots. So each shop has 11 slots, okay? So you're gonna use any cash at all to unlock every single shop that you have, unlock all of its slots, okay? Once you have done that, then you will work towards unlocking your depot. Now, do not spend any cash on rares. Do not spend any cash on uh, items, okay? Like finishing off items. Just stick with this, okay? You're gonna unlock your, your shop slots here. Now, when it comes to services, what you're gonna do is you're going to slowly unlock police, health, and fire. Do not be somebody who is constantly buying these tiny ones, okay? There's no reason for it. Just buy the big one. Now it's going to be a little, you know, steeper in price, but if you don't have the money and I showed this through the walkthrough, you can basically wait until you get the money by building up your residential zones. You should be refreshing any building materials that are asking for obscene amounts of stuff, right? So when you do a house upgrade, you have these bubbles that pop up. I don't have one. Oh, here we go. Okay. So what you'll do is you'll hit refresh, this little refresh button, and you'll hit okay. A 30 minute timer will begin and it will give you new building requirements. So new items it'll ask you for rather than the ones it was asking for before. Now, for those of you guys who are seeing things like 20 nails and stuff, you don't have to spend that much that early on in the game. So you should refresh any of those. To eliminate that 30 minute timer, you'll be prompt with a video ad, which takes 30 seconds. So you can do the 30 second video and be done with it and, and progress on without having to spend a bunch of money. That is what you should do. The next thing you need to do is start producing the right items. Okay, so as you level up, you'll unlock certain things and certain things are going to be what you're gonna wanna make. I have videos on all that stuff. So nails, chairs, um, grass if you have the shovels of course hammers you're going to need to make hammers for your chairs uh, veggies early on flour and donuts when you hit level 18 cement is what you would want to make if you do not have uh, nails um, time for nails is what I mean you know so if you have all 11 slots unlocked in the hardware store and you make a nail at four minutes uh, you're looking at 44 minutes, but I think I think level 18 players make it at five minutes or four and a half. I can't remember which. Point being, it's not that much of a difference. We're talking minutes here. Okay, so you've progressed up. You're leveling up and you're getting your services. The reason you're buying the big service is because you'll end up going broke buying a bunch of little ones and you'll end up with a bunch of unnecessary space taken up. Whereas if you would have just bought the big one, you would have been fine. Your happiness will drop a little bit. Yes, for a minute, but it's not the end of the world. Okay. The way the taxes are basically paid out is they're not paid out in one lump sum. So if you collect your taxes, 
okay? And then you drop your happiness for, let's say, an hour or two until you can get enough money, you're not going to miss out on very much money, if anything. You have to fall below a certain happiness threshold for it to even go against your taxes. And your taxes aren't going to make or break you, okay? If your taxes are making and breaking you, then you got problems. You're doing something very, very wrong. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to buy the, the biggest police health and fire, and I show this in my, my new walkthroughs. Once you've done that, you want to make sure that you are upgrading all of your residential zones to the maximum upgrade and being very careful on how many residential zones you place out. You don't want to end up with like 80 residentials that are not maximum upgrade. They're all half upgrade, right? Don't do that because they have to be at a maximum upgrade in order to convert them to an epic project. Now, you won't start actually converting anything to epic projects until you hit level 24 and you start playing in the mega league. Once you hit level 11, you're going to start playing the contest of mayors, which is this tower over here. You're going to be picking your assignment, okay? And get that out of the way. Okay. You're going to be picking your assignments based on what is easy and convenient in the lower leaks. Stuff like coins, VU repair, uh, if you have the VU tower unlocked, that is. You know, you have to boost your population. You can use education um, and transportation. You can use those categories to boost your population or parks to get your stuff boosted up enough to where you can unlock your VU tower, which is this tower over here. This tower, basically, you pay to unlock it. Every time you launch it, you get what they call VU points, okay? And it, it'll be a little bar up here at the top. You will then be told that you can pay to upgrade your tower. Do not pay to upgrade your tower until you can actually afford it. It's not something that is super, super important right this very minute. What you should be focusing on is keeping your people happy, but not overpopulating yourself to a point where you're constantly in this vicious cycle where you're going broke, right? So buying the right services is another key thing. A lot of people make the mistake and buy the wrong services because they're just trying to keep the people happy so they end up with all these different uh size services because they're just trying to do what they can afford at the time do not do that i'm going to show you which services are the best in terms of money versus coverage this one is your best option okay no matter how much money you have so buy this one the regular basic water tower then you have the oops the power and power, you're gonna go with coal power. Okay, and this is until, you, you're not unlocking Omega just yet. So this is what you're gonna wanna do for coal power, or for power. Then you have uh, sewage, basic sewage, and then you have waste management, okay? Which is the garbage incinerator. These are the ones you're gonna wanna buy. They do have pollution squares, so you'll need to be aware of that. Keep them away from your, your people. So when you place them down, they have a brown square. If anything, if any home is within this brown square, the happiness will drop down. So you will need to put them far enough away. Okay, so once you have gotten to this point, you've upgraded your homes. That way you can actually convert those to epics. You need to start thinking about your roads, okay? Now, I have a road video where I go through and I talk about how to set your roads up to never need upgraded again. When you have enough people on your roads, the roads will do this. Some look yellow, some look red, okay? Depending on how many people are on that road and how much stuff is placed on that road will determine if it is uh, heavy traffic or moderate traffic. If it's in the heavy, heavy traffic, it will need to be upgraded. Now... These are very expensive. Every one tiny dash, so this is one tiny dash here, is $7,500 from start to finish before Omega, okay? So what happens is if you have homes on these roads, then the happiness will drop down, okay? And you'll start losing taxes, so you have to pay. Well, we found a way to eliminate all that to where you can shift your traffic elsewhere 
and that way you can have heavy traffic in other places of your city and your happiness will not drop down. Essentially, you can only have three roads go red at any one time, okay? So what you're gonna be doing is you're going to be taking three little dashes like this one and placing them away from your residential zones, putting maybe some trees around the front of it and maybe, maybe a cool looking building and then let it sit, okay? And if you have any traffic that is starting to accumulate elsewhere, you'll pick that building up and move it so that that notification goes away. Eventually, these three little roads that you have set aside will start to turn red. Once those turn red, no other road in your city can go red. So it can't affect any homes, okay? As long as you don't move anything on those three red roads, you'll be okay. So if any, at any point you decide that you wanna move something on that little tiny dash that is red, if you pick it up, it's going to take that notification away and it's probably going to go to a place uh, where there's a lot of traffic, which is probably going to be near your homes and it's going to cause you a lot of problems for you. So make sure when you do this that you do it right, okay? That you are uh, making sure that this is something you want to be sitting for a long time or indefinitely. Now, you have to have these roads uh, if you have a services like let's say water power sewer if you try to use those buildings for it you will need to have those connected to the main road and i show all of this in the never upgrade your roads again video so all you have to do is go to my channel and type in never upgrade roads again missy ann and it'll pop up like the first video should pop right up okay so uh there's more details about that in there but once you get this set up you'll never have to pay for your roads again and that is going to save you unbelievable amounts of money. Now that you have the large police health and fire, you're not buying a bunch of police health and fire either. So because you're gonna be camping level 24, you're also not having to pay for any water, power, sewer, or garbage anymore because you're camping. So your, your population isn't going up you know, so rapidly that you have to pay for more services. The only time you would have to pay for more services is if you added more pop boosters, okay? And pop, Population is important for you to unlock certain key features of the game, like five slot factories is something you will want to get done right away. But ultimately, uh, anything beyond unlocking features in the game, there is little benefit. And the reason for that is because the taxes are accumulated by three different things, city level, city happiness, city pop. As you can see, I'm at level 99. My happiness is at 96%. So I still fall into that 20% tax increase category. Nothing has been dropped down at all, as you can see. I have a total of 3 million and two people between all my maps, and I get paid 22,000 a day. That's nothing, right? Now, if you look at yours, you're drastically lower level and you're getting paid probably close to about 7,000 a day. If you're right around like level 10, maybe 11, um, and you have a decent pop, that would be what I would, I would say. It's right around that, that range. So it's not, you know, like I have three and a, you know, 3.2 million and you have like less than 80,000 people. And we're looking at not a big difference here, right? 12,000 coins. So when it comes down to it, <clears throat> the reason the game developers did that is because they didn't want certain people they didn't want the low level people to be in a situation where they weren't getting taxes because they didn't have enough people, right? And then have the high level people getting these astronomical amounts of taxes because they have all kinds of people. So basically they made it to where city level has a lot to do with it, okay? Now the population, because as you can see, I'm the highest level and I'm the highest uh, happiness tax increase. So the only thing I can do to increase my taxes would be to uh, increase my population. Now, if I increase my population, what's gonna happen? I'm gonna have to pay for more services, right? So by the time I get done paying for more water, power, sewer, and garbage, and having to, you know, Co have coverage for all of these houses how much uh taxes do you think 
I'm really going to acquire by the time I pay for all that stuff that I haven't, that I don't have. And especially if I'm buying Omega services, because now I have to buy the Omega canisters, sell the Omega items, and then turn the Omega money into um, services. And those things are not cheap. So population should only be important to you for one of two reasons. Either because you're one of those weird people that really cares about that number for whatever reason. You just want to see how many people you can get. Or if you're somebody who only cares about what's beneficial to your city, then you would be somebody that would say, okay, you know, uh, I need this amount of population to unlock certain features in the game. And therefore, that is my requirement. That is my goal. So, okay, I need 90,000 or 120,000 people to unlock this feature in the game. Then you get those people and you get it done. The next thing that's going to be asking for population is going to be your airport. Okay, you need to unlock all three levels of the airport before you get to the Mega League. You don't want to waste any of your limited time tasks. So there's a couple of things in the game that you should not do, okay, very early on. Do not unlock any beach, any mountain, okay? These, these beach unlocks here and these mountain unlocks, they are limited. You can only do so many of them. When you have your first couple weeks in Mega, you're going to get flooded with these assignments. They pretty much pop up right after you do one. And they are always worth 2,500 points. So if you save all of these options for when you get to Mega, you can boost your average up really nicely the first couple weeks of the contest and take in some easy wins. If you burn through all of these and then you have, you know, you enter into Mega um, without them, then, I mean, it's not going to make or break you, but it, it would be nice to have uh, a little bit uh, leeway for the first couple weeks into the contest, especially since you guys are new and you know new to the contest and learning how to play as a low level player that's camping is not the same as playing as a high level player okay so even if you're not new to the game even if you've been playing for several years as a high level player it is a whole different game down here if you want to camp and play calm okay so you got to think about how you're going to arrange your tasks around to get the most out of your tasks without having to do any upgrades and without having to do too many cancellations. Now, as many of you guys know, I have a ton of videos on this theory, on this technique, not theory, technique. And I do teach uh, comm training courses for people who are interested. However, right now I am full. Um, I am working on a contest of mayor's math technique where you use that to decipher which task you should be uh, doing and why. Now that again is for low level players who are having to work around upgrades. If you're a high level player, it's a whole different game as a high level player. You don't have all of these restrictions that a low level player has. Now, at this point in the low, the low level, so between levels one and 18, you should be speed leveling, only upgrading regular residential zones, not unlocking any beach, not unlocking any mountain. You should be buying only the services that I have listed here and the uh, police, health, and fire as stated here. Any cash should be done and used for your, uh, your shops. And any land unlocks, which would be your dozer, those should be done rapidly. Get those done as fast as you can. Do not sell any rares for any reason at any time. And by any rares, I mean uh, VU storage or dozer if you're not trading them one for one for the other so let's say trading dozer for storage or storage for whatever then you should not be selling it the coins that you get from selling your rares is ridiculously low compared to what they have to give you in your game nothing that you could be doing and spending your coins on is more important than what you are selling Okay, so if you're selling those rares, nothing you could be buying is more important than what it is that you're selling. If you're selling rares to have enough money to do what? To do what? What would be more important than unlocking your storage and your land? Nothing. So find other ways to get money. 
start running nails full time. Make sure you're selling things to the global market. Make sure that you're picking up anything that is at low valued price and, and selling it for more. You should be buying rares constantly. Now, at the beginning of the game, as you saw through the walkthrough, we we do struggle with money a little bit here and there. That's just part of the game. But there are priorities, okay? There's things that you have to say, this is more important than the other. And right now, I'm not going to sell my storage to buy stupid services. That is the stupidest thing that anybody could do. Do not sell your very hard to get storage rares and dozer rares and things like that just to give the stupid Sims more water. Come on, man. Really? Are you serious right now? They're not going anywhere. Even if they move out, the house doesn't burn to the ground. So the worst thing that's gonna happen is you're gonna lose a teensy bit of taxes. And that's only if it falls below the 90% line of your happiness, okay? It's not gonna, they're not gonna be that unhappy forever. Give it a few minutes, earn up some, some, uh, some upgrades, you know, do some upgrades, get some stuff sold, and save your damn rares. There's no reason to sell them. None. It is foolish. Even after you max out, that is the stupidest thing you could do. You should be trading those for other rares. If you have your land and your storage unlocked, then you should be trading them for VU. VU equals keys, okay? Keys equal pop boosters, design stuff to build with, um, work hard upgrades for your very important uh, work tasks for the contest of mayors. There's lots of things that the keys are used for. And if you're selling them, you're basically selling gold keys. That's basically what you're doing when you sell VU. You're, you're selling gold keys, which is foolish, okay? So if you're somebody who cares about pop, you would want gold keys for that reason. If you're somebody who does epic projects, you're gonna want them for that reason. If you're somebody who's all about design, you're gonna want gold keys to buy buildings. If you're a war player, you're gonna need gold keys to upgrade your war cards. So there's a lot of reasons why you would want to save your VU, okay, or trade for them. Now, essentially what you wanna do is you want to speed level to level 18, okay? The moment you hit level 18, you need to get affiliated with a group that benefits you. Now, I'm going to make this very clear. Our group is not for players who slack. Our group, we, I expect a lot of out of people. I have a lot of people who want in this group, but I can't just accept people who just want to, they just want a group. Okay, they don't want to participate as a team. They're not following the guide 100%. They're slacking off. They're making mistakes. They're wasting my time and my team's time okay so we have a pretty good team right now and the team that we have they they do everything right they trade properly they follow the rules they do everything right and they win every week in the contest they they do really really well they follow my guide 100 percent so when they have somebody who joins in and they're just selling rares and they're not following the rules and they're asking for all kinds of ridiculous things it is a major strain on everybody in the group okay so when you come to my group if you ask for something you shall receive more often than not you're going to get what you need and the reason for that is because everybody does their part if everybody is inactive or doesn't do their part then it doesn't function that way. And you can't join into a group where everybody is active and hardcore players where they, they play to be beneficial. They play to, you know, uh, prevail and do good and, and progress and all that and just come in and be a slacker. You know, hardly on, hey, what's up? Only ask for things to yourself, never posting anything for anybody and just not following the rules, right? So you can't do that. Not in my club. You won't make it far. Now, if you're somebody who plays regularly, you are a strategic player, and you are looking for a good club, and you really want to do good, then yes, then reach out to me, okay? So you need to get affiliated with a group that best suits you. If you're following the Missy's Building Guide, that would need to include a group that plays war consistently. 
because even though we are not a war group and even though we don't play war for the purpose of war we p we play war for the purpose of the contest you have to be able to do your war assignments if you can't do your war assignments when they come up then you risk not winning okay now one of the assignments that comes in in the mega league is the upgrade 3k war card that assignment in particular is a limited assignment. Why is that a limited assignment? Because you can only upgrade so many war cards. So at some point you're going to run out. So you have to be very careful. You do not want to do that assignment in any other league besides the Mega League. That's the same for Beach and the same for Mountain and the same for Epic Projects, okay? So you shouldn't be doing any Epic Projects, Beach, Mountain, or War Card Unlocks until you get to Mega and have an assignment for it. Now. There are going to be a couple, you know, you're going to have to unlock war cards in order to obtain war cards. So you should unlock one of each color. So blue, yellow, and purple. One is rare, one is common, one is legendary. Purple is the legendary one. I have videos on all this stuff. I talk about this in the Misty's Building Guide Platinum. The reason that you're doing this, though, is because you want to earn as many war points as you possibly can, okay? stack up as many war cards as possible so that when you get to the point where you are going to be unlocking them uh in mega you actually have a bunch saved up otherwise you're going to be sitting there with no way to do anything so these are this is your disaster collection okay every time you earn war points which is here okay so every time you earn war points you end up in a situation where, um, like this, I'll show you. So you do an attack and you get these points. These points go towards your VU pass, which is the top button here. As you progress, you're going to unlock the very top part of this pass, just like the mayor's pass, except for this one is obtained through war points. Now there's different levels of the pass. If you would like to purchase it, you can, but it does go up each tier. Now, when you unlock certain things, you're going to unlock battle boosters, you're going to unlock, um, you know, war cards, you're going to unlock war simoleons. But when you join a group, depending on if you win or lose, but you have to, you have to attack. If you don't attack in war, you don't get the victory or the defeat prize. You should be attacking as much as possible, okay? Now, when you go to your war store here, you're going to buy the jackpot boosters. The jackpot ones are the ones with the star and the plus. So you would buy these, preferably the level ones. Okay, they see how they say level one, two, and three? This one says level two. That means that this one lasts for 20 minutes. The only difference is the duration of time in which they last. You guys should not be buying any war items at all. Okay? You guys should only be buying the jackpot boosters. Reason being that you guys can do your war deliveries and your, your war repairs for very, very cheap. So if you get hit in war, you're gonna get these little green hats that are gonna appear all over your city. If they kill you, uh, you won't be able to attack until you repair 100%. But any war coins should be spent on the war uh, the jackpots the jackpots give you double points when you attack so when you go to attack a city what you'll do is you will select the city you want to attack click this button here and you'll click the jackpot you will drag the jackpot booster over on the city that you want to attack and it will start a timer depending on which jackpot you chose this is the 20 minute timer see how it says 20 minutes now you have 20 minutes to attack this city with as much as you can you know get as many points as you can in on this city and then basically that's it you know that now you've earned double points if there's any health remaining on this person's city you need to go to your group so you would open up your chat here and you would say open jp open jackpot this will alert other people that they can attack that jackpot before the timer runs out if you see open jackpot to bust that means that the person has been killed but if somebody has a shield buster attack, which is this attack here, they can knock that person's shield out, repair that person's city for seven health, which is why it has a med kit, and then you can attack on that jackpot more. 
you can only hit so many times before your energy runs out okay so you will need to pay attention to your energy as you can see up at the top i have six energy remaining because i just did an attack there's ways that you can get your energy to regenerate faster that would be by launching a energy boost a pump right here on your city or one of your friends cities if they ask for one okay the dud this is something that you would launch on yourself on your team not their team so many people make these mistakes this particular booster it says fewer points when target is attacked you wouldn't want to launch it on a target you're attacking would you no so let's say that you notice that somebody laid a jackpot on you you could put down a dud which would make it to where when they hit you they only get a certain you know half points so if you want to do the umbrella then that means that they have to shield bust you before they can hit on that jackpot because you put a shield over you then you have the vampire booster which this one is basically it makes the energy regeneration slower okay so if your opposing teammate is you know got an energy pump on you could combat it with an energy vampire now you have a freeze this basically you would put on the opposing team and it would keep them from being able to launch any attacks until that booster is over each level of the booster will determine the time frame of the um the booster and or the duration so like this one if you read it it says speeds up energy regeneration by four times and it lasts for one hour this one lasts one hour but it only does three times okay so you just have to read them now spending your um your more simoleons on jackpot boosters attacking as much as you possibly can will make a huge difference you'll stack up a bunch of war cards you'll get all these war cards you know stacked up and that way when you get to mega and you get those easy 3k tasks you will be able to um unlock them okay so you'll only unlock them for the purpose of the contest now when you get to mega you should also be at level 24 not at level 18 you need to be at level 24 when you get to level 18 you will or level 20 you'll unlock silver tokens the tokens go towards speeding up your production so when you click on any one of your shops if you want to speed up your items you click on the tokens here and this one will speed up speed up your your producing of these items by four times but this one goes for 12 times okay the epic projects are pieces of speed tokens that you're able to collect forever so what you want to do is you want to end up making all of your homes gold epics while you're a low level so they're the cheapest possible okay so what you're going to do is you're going to level up to 24 when you when you hit level 24 you're going to stop leveling you're going to save that full bar of experience for the mega league okay so you'll be able to utilize that full uh 24 level bar without going up to level 25 so you'll have basically like uh you know nine tenths of a bar if if you will so you'll be able to say okay i can use up all of this experience and that way i don't hit level 25. you would only do the regular residential uh assignments if they are at the 1600 range or higher in your list so let's say that you start your first week in mega and you get a regular residential upgrade for 2400 you would be able to do that assignment right because you have enough experience there you would be able to do your beach unlocks be prepared for that because those are not cheap you know the first week or two in mega it's going to cost you a lot of coin and beach items and stuff uh save any mayor's pass stuff any of these things here save them for your assignments i go through and i tell you guys all this stuff in the other the other videos so basically um uh, you know storage if you don't have enough here to upgrade don't collect it yet you know there's no reason for it to take up room in your your storage if you don't have enough to actually upgrade let's say it's asking for five of each storage item and you only have three here and you don't have the others just wait 
you know, there's no reason to collect it prematurely. Let's say that you are playing the contest and you have a key assignment that you're supposed to do, you know, 1600 or higher. Uh, then you could go ahead and collect it on the gold keys. If you have one to unlock beach or mountain, you have these deeds here. Do not collect these deeds until you are at some of your more expensive uh, unlocks because you will not be allowed to pick between the two. So let's say you have enough beach items and it's only asking for one of each. If you collect one of your deeds, it's gonna ask you to use one of your deeds before your items, okay? So uh, you would wanna save the deeds for when it's asking for a lot of items versus only a few. Save you a bunch of money that way. Same with the mountain. Now, for those of you guys who already have your mountain and beach maxed out, uh, when you when you collect these, they will be stored for you for when you do finally unlock your regional maps. One of the things that people need to be very aware of is that your war cards, your epic projects, and all that stuff, they're very limited tasks. You don't want to burn through your epic projects right away. Now I have videos on epics where I go through and I talk about how to hit gold super easy, okay? <clears throat> you need to make sure that you're picking the category you like the look of the best and that you actually have um, enough three and you know two pointer, but your ones and twos should be put in storage and threes and fours should be out, okay? so. Again, you know, that's why we're doing this, so that when you get to level 24, you have all of those homes converted to gold epics. Now, at this point in the Missy's Building Guide, you will have converted all of your homes to gold epics. You will basically have um, maxed out your land. You want to try to get your, ma your, your land unlocked before you hit Mega. Now, the reason for this is because the dozer is not easy to just continuously, re you know, keep stacking up. It does take room on your storage, your money, and it's not something that you can just easily find. So if you wait until you get to Mega, then you end up in the situation where that 2K dozer task is always in your list and it causes more problems than it does good. So yeah, it's an easy 2K task when you have the items, but once you complete it and it comes right back, then it's just something in your list that's blocking other 2K tasks from appearing. So it's better just to get that one out of the way before you get to Mega, the best that you can anyway. And if you're in Mega and you have it still, then try to get it done and dealt with as fast as you possibly can. Storage should be number one priority all the time. From the moment you start playing, till the moment you max out. Storage is number one priority. You need to get that unlocked as quickly as possible. The next thing is opinion bubbles. From the start to the end of time, you're going to get these little opinion bubbles that pop up all over your city, okay? They pop up more frequently when you put down certain categories. So let's say you put down a school around the homes. All of a sudden the Sims start talking you'll see these little bubbles like this. Now, the more stuff you put around your city and the more you move things around, the more they talk. The more they talk, the more rares you get. So it's a good way to get rares to pop up. If you don't pop your opinion bubbles, you're not gonna get half as many rares, especially as a low-level player. Low-level players get a majority of their rares from the opinion bubbles. You have gift boxes that you'll, you'll hit uh, you get like 25 of them or something every time, uh, every day. So you'll go to people's cities and you'll start, you know, kind of scrolling around and you'll see a gift bubble. P always pop the gift bubbles. Always buy items that are sold at base price and sell them for more. You can also always, always look at these little coins that pop up around your city. Now, more often than not, they will offer you they'll pick the, the item that you have the most of so you got to be really careful do not ever sell your rares but you can make some pretty decent coin this way if you're selling the items that um, they're asking for so like sometimes they'll say you can sell like a pink drink or something well, you wouldn't have those unlocked so like let's say they'll say oh well, we'll buy this many nails from you for this much do the calculations see if 
it's a good deal if it's something that you would, you know, if it's beyond the price you would sell for normally, and then it's an easy sale, right? Now, the way selling items works is you're going to go to this area here, and when you go to sell an item, you post it for sale. What you'll do is you will select how many you want to post, and then you'll either increase the price to the maximum point, or you will lower the price. Now, if you're going to lower the price, you should lower the price before you do the quantity. It'll make it faster. So let's say that I want to sell five nails for five pennies. I would not click five first and then lower the price from 300. I would lower the price from the 60, because it's a shorter drop, and then I would increase the quantity like that, okay? Now, one thing that you have to be very aware of is that there is a little blue box below this. Now, this little blue box, it, if checked, it will advertise whatever it is you're selling to the global market, meaning anybody who goes to the Global HQ and has this in their depot can see this, or in their HQ can see this for sale, like right here. Once they click it, any items that they have unlocked, they can view in your depot. Okay, so if you only want your depot visible to group members, you need to make sure that nothing in your depot went on the global market. If you did click the item to be advertised to the global market, it'll have a little blue global symbol next to it. If you want to take it off the global market, someone will have to purchase it or you'll have to junk the item. If you click on this and you hit $1 delete, you do not get that item back. You do not get paid for that item. You basically trash it. So don't do that, okay? Uh, you can always have a group member purchase it to get your depot off of Global, but just be aware that um, when people from Global buy your stuff, it will pop up like this. Or if it's somebody who used to be on your friends list who, who you deleted, and they haven't, uh, their, their game hasn't synced yet, it'll pop up like this. That's why that one's there. It's from somebody on my friends list keeps buying shit from my depot and start piss me off. I had to remove them and block them and they still haven't got the point. So if you are on my friends list or you were on my friends list, stop buying from my depot. These are meant for group members. This is why I don't add people because they don't have any common sense. You know, I mean, come on, man. So, uh, that pretty much is it, you guys, for now. But for those of you who want to know how well people do on the Misty's Building Guide, just a heads up, pretty much everybody who has uh, been following the Misty's Building Guide for three to six months has pretty much everything done. Now, all of their stats and screenshots of their cities and all that is in the progress report video that went up about two weeks ago I highly recommend you take a look at it you know a lot of these people have 3600 platinum keys 16,000 cash on top of buying all four maxis which is what you're going to want to do when you finally win your mega your first mega you'll be happy about that and you'll buy your first maxis okay maxis can be located in the health tab health police or fire actually and it is this building here the first one is 1,000, the second one is 2,000, the third one is 4,000, and the fourth and beyond is 8,000. Now, these buildings are four squares. They cover police, health, and fire all in one. They are also, they're really nice because they sell one VU item per day, and that is beneficial to you as well. So just um, do the best that you can. You know, and don't do these design upgrade, the design challenges right now, especially early on. It's a waste of your experience, and you're really not in a position to be wasting experience this early on in the game. Once you have got several mega wins, and you've unlocked all of your beach and your mountain, you will basically be converting all of your homes to epic projects, uh, gold epic projects, and then once you get to that point, you're going to continue to win Mega, continue to get everything unlocked, make sure everything's all said and done before you even think of going beyond level 24. Okay? And I have videos on that as well. Missy's Building Guide, uh, Part 3. Okay? Have a good damn day.